And that seems like a great place to start our show. Hi, everybody. My name is John Graham, and I am an aerial cinematographer out of New York. And I've worked on dozens of feature films and TV shows and action sports shows and a lot of different stuff. I specialize in heavy lift drones and DJI drones. Drones, drones, drones. Joining me is my co-host, Paul Nurkula. You guys know and love him already, I'm sure. That's why you're all here. The DRL Drone Racing League World Champion. This guy is also a master of FPV cinematography, if that is such a thing. But on the show called The Good Flight Podcast, we like to dive into all of those different facets of professional drone life. So thank you for listening to The Good Flight Podcast, a wonderful look at the stories behind the scenes of professional drone world stuff. Okay, we have a great episode for you guys today. Um, Tonight's episode is going to be raw. It's going to be unfiltered and it's going to be hilarious because joining us as our guest is an absolute animal on the sticks. You got to trust me here because no one knows who he is and that's the best (laughs) part about it and it's probably going to be one of the best episodes to date. This episode, I'm planning on bringing the heat, okay? I'm planning on bringing the tough questions to the table for once, all right? It's time. We're going to learn what it's really like to be a professional drone pilot in Hollywood. Our guest today is very talented and has flown on also on countless major motion pictures, TV shows, live motorsports work. He specializes in heavy lift aerial cinematography, introducing one of my very, very good friends, IRL, everybody, my brother from another mother, James Sykes, everybody. <laughs> James, thank you very much. Joining us out in LA, everybody. James Sykes. Here we are. How's it going? Your house may be on fire, John. I don't uh, know if you see that. That is actually a paid atmosphere. I pay a lot of money for that atmosphere. Every time we do the show, I hit a little bit of... Yeah. into your room. I hit a little bit of that smoke (laughs) machine button. Uh, Our listeners know it well by now. When you say something cool, James, I'm going to hit this button and we're going to... It's going to get lit. Smoke it out. (laughs) Smoke it out. Congratulations mm. on New Jersey, by the way, for the new law passed about uh, legalizing marijuana. Different oh, really? podcast, different show. <laughs> <laughs> that was a right turn. I had no idea where you're going with that. Uh, I'm I'm not in New Jersey, but uh, sometimes I I I, I do go uh, into New Jersey. But um, Nurk, are you in New Jersey? No, I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Then no one here is from New Jersey, USA. <laughs> so I'm stoked to have James on the show. Um, to give you guys a little bit of background, a little bit of um, a history between why James is here is him and I have been working together for, um, I guess what I want to say like four years now on some of the biggest projects uh, in our careers. We've, we've been a team out there in the drone world and uh, we get along pretty well, but I think our footage uh, really speaks the truth. What do you think, James? We've done a lot of really cool projects together in the past. It feels like it's been about four years since I worked with you. But definitely my probably my favorite operator to be on the road with. We've had so many great times on the road uh, doing multiple different types of flying. Heavy lift stuff, Inspire stuff, uh, FPV stuff, breaking FPV stuff in the fields uh, next to where we're supposed to be working. For our challenges, uh, different, all kinds of fun stuff. And then afterwards, we usually find a go-kart track or an indoor skydiving ring and go after it. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the indoor skydiving <laughs> thing. I'm curious. What about what about John makes him fun to work with? I, I, I don't figure it out yet. It's, it's mostly you know just like nails you. on a chalkboard for me. So I can tell you. You know what? It's just because he's so good at what he does and he makes my job really easy don't his drones just fly themselves and well the beauty is when i'm working with him he's not flying okay that's, that's it's dangerous true. out there i got you okay so that's true James, i'm usually piloting yep 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 most of the time actually in fact the only times i fly when i'm working with james is when <laughs> <laughs> is when you either refuse to fly because you're like too much of a prima donna about it and like you need your water break or whatever and oh, i yeah. know yeah, and i know that that sounds really la 
yeah it, and i yeah yeah exactly. i know the drone has to go to that mark <laughs> like for instance in the ferrari challenge like there's a live broadcast happening and i look around and i don't know where my pilot is and luckily he's, we're on open comms and he knows i'm in the porta john doing what i need to do and i'm on my way right back but the problem is you know he says it like i just run away we've been flying for four and a half hours straight through yeah. and then next thing you know it's like listen i gotta go to the bathroom here hold the sticks next thing i know i come back john's on the pilot sticks throws it in addy punches it across the the path and then pops over to the other uh, controller to do the camera i mean he's a one-man show he definitely makes it look like uh people didn't disappear to go to the bathroom but that doesn't work quite the same way when he goes off and does his thing <laughs> I'm not, not a good camera operator once it comes to those uh, fast moving cars. That's for sure. It's hard. He did a Ferrari challenge here in Indianapolis and I got to go just check it out kind of behind the scenes. And uh, he gave during some practice runs, he was like, Oh, here you try it. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be hard. I sat down, tried it for about 45 seconds. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is hard. Oh, yeah. Like it, it, it was, <clears throat> it was, exactly as hard as i thought it was going to be and that was impressive so i have like i i didn't really respect john that much before that and then after that i'm like okay you've earned it you're good yeah That's no really he's very good here. and and there's another <laughs> aspect to john that is uh he's like special way of motivating people to do things that maybe they're not thinking they're are good ideas or he like coerced me into doing stuff he's like you know what you don't want to do it give me the sticks and i'm sitting there i'll do it you know it's mostly, it's, it's not that it's a safety issue. It's like, okay, he's trying to push me to do extra work. And in, in my opinion, uh, extra work equals danger because you're in there trying to get an extra shot for a client that they didn't ask for. Next thing you know, the drone goes down and it's on you, right? And so, you, you know. Must be, are, there, are you union? Uh, no, no, no union. Okay. But apparently, John, you'll have to educate me a little bit on uh, how that works. Yeah, we have some yeah. union. Uh, some things are changing in the drone world with unions right now. So that's what I hear. Yeah, now actually, you can be union and actually, like you know, be on a uh, company's time card, uh, which means you're getting paid as a drone operator under that production as it, from in the union, which is very very new as of this year. So. Hmm. Which is great, especially since you pay ten grand to get in, and then you're never going to work the amount of days to get the benefits. For me, I don't see it making sense, but if you know if it was possible, I would be interested. I think what you meant by asking James is if he's union is <clears throat> it, is he lazy? <laughs> no, it just it just sounded like you started with kind of like some excuses, maybe some. I, I mean, there's definitely some of that going on. Like I get there on Thursday afternoon, really excited to start figuring out the flight lines and killing it. Uh, and, and I make it, I play it down a little bit, but these shots are insane. By the time yeah. that we like figure out what we want to do, it's pretty special, you know, and I don't think that a lot of teams are, would, would pull it off quite the same way. I know a lot of teams wouldn't pull it off because we've seen it like, you know, part of what was so cool about the Ferrari challenge is uh, the first year we did it where James actually brought me on to that project. Um, we worked together previously on shows like Mr. Robot. I'll, I'll just throw that out there again. Lovecraft Country, uh, HBO sh a show that actually just came out, which we shot like over two years ago. James and I did like seven or eight days on that together. So we've worked together pretty extensively. And then when the Ferrari Challenge project came into fruition was actually through a company called LA Drones, which James is in LA and he's good friends and good good buddies and is uh, one of their lead pilots at LA Drones. He he's like, yeah, we got to get Johnny in here, and no one knew who I was, uh, you know, at, from the East Coast or whatever. Yeah, that was just a great opportunity to kind of show what I could provide, you know, bring to the table with James and we were going neck and neck with five other drone teams. That was the, the bit of competitiveness, which you don't really ever get on a drone job to this date. That was the only, that was the best part. I think I really enjoyed that. Like, Oh, getting back to like lunchtime and comparing like the angles and shots and seeing which shot dad liked the best, you know, or the client liked the best. Dad is Austin Smith. He runs LA Drones. He's he's like guy that puts it all together. Uh, he secured the contract with Ferrari Challenge and Intel, and he's kind of a staple in the Los Angeles drone industry. Yep. Uh, guy's done everything. So 
when you get back to the uh, home base and you show you want him to like give you some acknowledgement like that shot was very cool usually uh not a lot want, blows him away anymore <laughs> you just want dad to like it you know you just want dad to love you oh yeah for sure you know you want, you want, want his approval his attention i hear you you want his allowance well so you guys are saying that there were five different drone teams at the same event is that what was happening yeah so basically the way that it worked was uh we would have i think we may have even had up to seven drone teams seven drone oh, five to seven drone teams covering an entire racetrack okay. at the same time what's a team like three guys two guys it would be a pilot and an operator okay. uh cam up and then basically what we would end up doing is feel kind of like we were in the race ourselves because we would be you know, nailing this flight line down and then hitting our shots, getting about, I don't know, seven or eight takes through. And then we'd have to tear in, land, hot swap batteries onto the Inspire and get it back out. Like we might have gotten that Inspire back out of there in like seven seconds, like yep. a couple of times. Nice. I mean, it was super fast. <laughs> and then just right back up into the race. You know, we have confidence monitors with a live race feed so that we can see the packs that they're following and and you know kind of see if anyone else is doing anything that's like noteworthy and we're like man that was a killer shot or what look at crashing on the you know you can see everything that's going on so it was a really fun event and like john was saying it's it's really cool to be able to directly compete with five or six other teams and and just kind of measure up and feel good about it hopefully you're feeling good about it or else you're you're not on the upside but we they were all great teams they're all great operators and they were i mean to cover cars going 150 170 miles an hour yep. with a drone that realistically goes 50 miles an hour yep. <laughs> it's it's not easy to do i mean you have no. to get really creative on on how you need to track these cars because you might be responsible for half a mile worth of track yeah like which part of the track you skip <clears throat> and how do you find a corner where people are going slow enough right yeah. well you're just kind of like yeah they're going in and out of turns and you have to pick that line that gives you the best opportunity to stick with them and find but that you start also want you got to find that parallax you got to get that long lens working all that good stuff. and you need to find the point that when you're finished with your shot you can get back in time to reset <laughs> yeah you're you not know? flying 45 minutes part. yeah what track was it that you guys were working on yeah we worked on a lot of tracks together uh including uh <clears throat> circuit of the americas in austin Oof. texas that was Beautiful. earlier this year a lot of good spots to yeah. put the drone though Road Atlanta, track, Road Atlanta, right before yep. COVID hit. James and I were down there. He was actually sick probably with COVID at that time. Thanks, James. <laughs> um, we've done Watkins Glen. We've done Laguna Seca. Nice. We've done oh. um, Sebring. Sebring, just, yeah, yeah, recently. Homestead was the one that Dad did. We didn't do that one, but there was a lot of tracks. Um, yeah. There, we're probably forgetting one or two, but um, awesome. yeah, it's those are all amazing tracks. It's like basically the IndyCar like series you just described, but with Ferraris. It's awesome. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, it is a bunch of rich people out there <clears throat> like playing with their toys and um, versus professional That's, drivers that are really. Those guys are a little more relaxed too, so you can get get away with more, maybe. Yeah, and the other good thing is um, the opportunity <clears throat> there is there's not really a lot of people that come see those races. Mm. so we we can we kind of have free reign to fly not directly over the track but um kind of outside of the track we just alongside it yeah over stands yeah. over like yeah. where seating where people would normally be yeah that's cool yep yep i mean it's uh, a gentleman's racing series so yeah like there's not that many people in attendance to watch and if they are they're usually like family friends of the people that are racing and, and they're so down they're the pits in anyway the, in the yeah they're probably in the paddock yeah. so it's not like you know, it's pretty empty. There's always a few stragglers pumping around through the woods, <laughs> trying to sneak through and looking through the fence at the track. But uh, like we're never really over anybody. You um, know what, uh, James? That reminds me of a time we were at Watkins Glen in New York, and we were filming in this little section of the track, my favorite section called the Boot, which is actually oh, that was the Boot track. All yeah, these tracks man. start to blend together after a while. So for for <laughs> someone that's not like racing it on a simulator every weekend. Like John, like uh, I forget. We Some both of do. them kind of blend together, but yeah, the boot that was a fun one. Go ahead, John. The, the boot <laughs> was the track. The boot was the track where I drove that uh, the golf cart through that tunnel where there was like there was two no inches of. There was no way it was going to fit, there and was I just no way. I'd have bet everything on it, and this I just gassed <laughs> it, and it worked. Jeez, literally, just barely got through that tunnel. <laughs> but That's yeah, horrible. we had um, we during the race. We actually had a catastrophic failure. Do you remember what happened there? Why don't you tell uh, tell everybody? I do, what John. There, Mr. I'll Pilot tell you what James. happened. I was uh, full stick, sport mode, Inspire, chasing after a group of Ferraris racing for first place. As you do. Basically, 
yeah, you know, sometimes they try and pump you back to third and fourth. I said, no, we're sticking with the leaders. They're the fastest. And next thing you know, this thing just starts spinning out of the air. And And inspire. It starts just like, yeah, like the FPV just flipping around, but only this one has no way to recover. And there was a... Prop we found out it had jettisoned a prop <laughs> at like 65 miles an hour and just fell straight into the ground. <laughs> and uh, has Dexter been on this show yet? Have we talked about Dexter? We've all? talked yeah. about Dexter. Dexter. It was Dexter's <laughs> brand new Inspire. <laughs> brand new. And uh, Woof. that was fun to, to go back to lunch and tell Dexter, hey, Dexter, I'm so sorry, but it's a catastrophic failure. <laughs> That's what insurance is for. That is what insurance is for, but it still stings a lot. And uh, I just remember over the comms too, because I was the guy listening to <laughs> dad, Austin. He was the director of the show too. So he's coordinating the cameras or whatever. And they're like, camera seven, where's your where's your feed? Camera seven. And um, I'm like, yeah, we have a drone failure. And he's like, how bad? And I just get back with one word, catastrophic. catastrophic. <laughs> <laughs> and like everyone, everyone. Dexter heard that it. and he's like, ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Like, he was, what a bummer you know you're hearing that on the radio you got seven drone teams chimed in how bad is it uh yeah, it's catastrophic <laughs> i mean that's the it one sounds funny now use. it's funny now but it almost hit big actually uh yeah it was one of the, one of the uh yeah one of the other teams was posted out a couple hundred yards and didn't land all that far from him luckily we weren't over him yeah luck definitely but, but you know that's why you don't do it that and i also agree like we still don't fly over the track. That was one of the incidents. I'm not even sure that ever trickled really back to Ferrari because we kind of just like took care so. of it. We got our backup yeah. out and I don't, I think we were might, might've been down for like 10 minutes before we got our backup drone in the air. Sure. So it's like one of those things you have to be like kind of always prepared for. We always have a backup drone. So if you guys are listening yeah. and, and you don't have a backup system, like invest in a backup system as a professional, you, you need to have a full, you need to have a two is one, one is none. And it's also another reason to just like follow the law. Uh, the FAA is, I mean, as much as we like to kid there, I think those rules and regulations are legitimately there for a reason and sure. flying, not flying over people is one of those things that helped us prevent like, you know, not having anyone injured because we were not flying <clears throat> over people. And yeah, in an instance where the drone will fail, it's going to fall, you know, more or less straight down. Right. So that's what happened. Landed yeah. I mean, the grass. bottom line is, uh, I think on that drone specifically, the cause was, uh, aftermarket propeller system. Yes. Which had just been on and I'm not afraid to say it. Okay. Zor props. You failed. <laughs> Zor. Right? Okay. Shots fired. At, as I like AZ, you are. Z. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. Got you. Another Chinese and prop manufacturer. <clears throat> they were, there was two designs that they were uh, working with, and we had both of them on the on the job that weekend with Kavanaugh, who you had on the show. He has yep, Alex. props on his drone too. And uh, one set, one setup or attachment uh, method was really good, and then the other one, I don't know for what. Do you remember what it was? It was like a counter. It was a, or it was it a quick, popped off. Yeah, it was a quick release thing. I don't know where how it failed. It was you know we. It could we have been ca- installation error. I don't Who know. Knows? Who knows? But it failed. Yeah, James, either way we, it failed. I mean, we got a lot of questions to get to. I'm going to move on. I promised our listeners I was going to put you in the hot seat. <laughs> Here we go, Big Daddy. <laughs> James, what is yes. it really like to be a professional drone pilot in Hollywood, California? Born and born out, and yeah. raised, born and raised by the way, James <clears throat> is what he calls himself a unicorn or something. Yeah, what is it like to be working for years in Hollywood as a drone. Are you talking about recently or are you talking about three years ago? Or what are you Maybe. talking about? Because this industry is changing so like, fast. Yeah. Let's, let's like, start in like the, the normal times, the best of times. Okay. And then I can tell you that, now uh, in my experience, I got into drones in a, 2012 and there was a handful of teams that were really taking a shot at it. I think they called them the big seven. I mean, there was a, like aerial mob, like it was, a few teams that were actually uh, working legally. They had their 333s and they had figured it out. You had to be a, you know, an aircraft pilot to fly these things initially. Uh, well, initially it was the Wild West, but then they implemented 333 and you had to have a full size certificate to operate the drone. Right. And that was a driving force. So I went 
I said, all right, I need my pilot's license. I got to figure this out because people are starting to not hire me anymore because I don't have that done. And that was like scary time because that meant I had to invest a lot of time and money into getting a license to start working again. And there was like promises of jobs if I finished it in time. And then yeah. of course I started, I finished this license for powered parachutes because yeah. it was the uh, quickest and cheapest way <laughs> yeah. to get a certificate. Yep. And I figured that out pretty early on. And I helped a couple of other guys that are pretty big in the industry get their licenses that way as well. So you're talking about uh, powered parachutes like the paragliders, right? <clears throat> it's essentially like a dune buggy go-kart with a fan on the back. And then you've got a chute or a wing above you. And there are no redundancies there. And <laughs> uh, it's kind of freaky. Well, but I mean, it's, it's a, a redundancy is you're already parachuting like you're already doing the emergency well, yeah, situation but if that parachute breaks you got nothing yeah going out like a streamer all right yeah. into a woods i i something. my uncle is pretty into it and took me once and i was like i'm good that's fine nothing should happen i mean those parachutes are rated for so much weight anyways but you yeah. know it's always I mean, a I'm thought in it. my mind in a world of redundancies yeah. you know that we kind of preach about all the time to not have any uh, is, is interesting, but it's I got that finished up. I went up to Arlington, Washington. I met up with a, a an instructor. I had a school up there. I, I think I got my license done in like eight or nine days, like super fast. Nice. Uh, with a friend of mine and came back, started working under the three, three, three rules with like three or four companies as a, as a freelance pilot. And uh, those were great days. I mean, there was, there were big jobs to be had. There were, a lot of people that weren't sure like how to use drones efficiently at that time too. I mean, arguably still, but people know like <laughs> what a drone is now. People didn't know then like people weren't hiring drones because they didn't know they were allowed to, or that they were like real uh, right. essentially or worthwhile. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, because they originally with like servo driven gimbals or yeah. no gimbal at all, they kind of really weren't, right. you know, um, I remember seeing like the first thing that got me like super psyched was the copter kids reel uh, with yeah. Trent and his single rotor. And I was just like, this is nasty. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was like, I have to do this chasing down like a motocross rider, just like flying through the air with a single rotor. Shout Still out Trent dangerous. Palmer. Uh, come on the good flight podcast. We'd love to have yeah. you. <laughs> okay, guys, okay. Uh, Two degrees of separation. I think we can get him. You should. He's, he's probably worth talking to. He's got a lot of other cool oh, stuff yeah. going on. But, I've been DMing uh, him for years. He hasn't responded once. I'll just, I'll I mean, it. I've never met the man, but I'll text him, uh, figure out a way he responds to me. It must be that haircut. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so after that kind of time, uh, you know, it's the, the markets uh, were protected almost for a little bit with people sure. that, that didn't have licenses weren't flying. And there was really no budging on that. Like it was super strict, you know, helicopter, full-size helicopter regulation and rules essentially imposed on drones. And then they came about, well, how long was that around? Like two years? Three yeah. years or so? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Something like that, I would say. And then they uh, revamped it with 107 and then it just kind of opened the floodgates. But uh, that time really gave me a chance to establish myself with a lot of different companies as, as a, a kind of a key piece of the team. And I'm kind of like a second or third option for certain teams. So people double or triple book and then I get a call, you know? Yeah. And there's like one or two where I'm kind of like maybe the first call. Uh, and it works out pretty well for the most part. John and I originally met because we were working with a company based out of New York called their robo. And they used to get like a ton of big jobs yeah. and uh, they are no more for whatever reason. They decided to go another direction <laughs> Uh, which was interesting because they were they were crushing and yeah they had a lot of opportunities and that's i think john where i got most of my bigger work from like when we did green book and like all these different uh shows and movies netflix that was with their robo but they threw in the towel and uh said no more and so that was kind of the end of my flying on the east coast i was out there all the time probably two or three times a month. And now I don't really do that anymore. I'm pretty much. And at that time LA. you were residing in LA. Yeah. I've been you're here out, the whole time. You're just crossing the country two, three times a month. Jeez. Oh, oh man. Yeah. There was, there was a time where they had a job. What was that? Were you on, you were on that job, John? I was in like Taipei or something. I was like way out there. I was in or Bali or Hong Kong. I was somewhere in Asia 
And I got a call from the owner of this company. It's like, we need you to fly oh, yeah. tomorrow. And I'm like, I'm not coming home to fly a job. I'm like on vacation. Jeez. And this is like, that's it. And he's, he's like, we'll do anything. Like just come and fly that. There was already a pilot on the job with John. Yeah. And they're making me fly back to do this like risky woods shot or something. And bring in James, bring in James Sykes <laughs> when it's risky and you need someone to be like dialed in that or half nice. dialed just to nail it. Like, I don't know. Either way, he nails it. It's never an issue. You get it. You move on. What no What about deal. you, James? Makes you equipped for those kind of high pressure situations, like when you know that's a that's a good question. I'm saying we got to have James because he can get it done. What What about you know your past? What What's brought you to the point where you are the guy for that? It's interesting. I've been trying to figure that out so that I could like help replicate other people to kind of feel similar. Like there's like. You can't hire people that are just diehard RC guys because they just like kind of lack the set etiquette and maybe like some other parts of, of the deal. Watch and me. then they're, but they may be great on the sticks, you know, like obviously more qualified. And then there's people that are just straight set etiquette and they really can't handle the flying portion. You know, sure. they may know a little bit, but it's about a, like a balance between that. And I haven't figured out exactly what it is that makes the perfect i'm not perfect but makes the perfect like combination for uh, yeah. someone to do that and the only thing i can think of is like you just can't get rattled mm -hmm. you know like sure. i mean we've been <laughs> i've had directors like big time directors literally screaming at me to like continue flying a drone where the batteries are depleted <laughs> and i'm just like you can yell all you want but that doesn't mean this thing's not going to fall out of the air in two minutes yeah. yep. you know it's coming home yeah, I and think so, I think I think that kind of attitude that you have, James, is like maybe something of confidence, yeah. you know, it gives other people confidence that you actually know what you're doing, because the reality is only those three or four people on the drone crew on the set actually know what's happening with that piece of equipment. So if you true. are a part of that crew and you're panicking or um, showing tales or signs that there's a malfunction in one of the pieces of gear which quite often happens very regularly it's one of those things i've said it before it's like never let them see you sweat yeah even though you're a big guy and i've seen you sweat a lot i don't know i, I mean it's all that the confidence it's that confidence <clears throat> it's a lot of things though i think it's it's i mean for clientele and the set side it's mostly expectation management mm -hmm. you know that's the biggest thing. You, you walk in there, you promise the world and like you say, oh, we can get every shot. And then you go out there and you can't get the shot. You look terrible. But if you go out there and you say this shot you want is unrealistic because of this, this and this, but we can get something very similar by doing this. Yeah. You know, that's what it is. And that's when you make the call, like they're saying they're open to it or maybe they're not open to it. And you have to just say no, you know. Oh, sorry. Go do ahead. you think that in a way like being on set is almost as much like work as it is sales to where you're kind of like, Hey, this is what we really can do. You should try this one instead of this one. You know, is there, is there a degree to where you're trying to like, you know, bring people along to your perspective on that? I think it used to be much more okay. than it is now because it's people changed. were unsure. Yeah. Well, people didn't know what was possible. People didn't know what was uh, safe. You know, like I personally am very comfortable putting a heavy lift drone that's very large into small spaces, you know, because I know how it's going to react. Uh, and so I built in my own margin and I know that this is going to be no problem. Yep. I know other people that don't like that fly uh, Mavics and they don't want to fly through doorways. And it's like, obviously in your industry, like tight gaps is like the kind of the name of the game. Sweet. I would love to fly through a doorway. That's so big. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, so, so, but you know, to two people, that's, a completely different conversation yeah totally and so like for me uh it used to be like what do you want and they'll say well we kind of want to be close like how close can you get to the talent here and it's like well there's two conversations it's like yeah one not close at all <laughs> like i've been asked to fly like they said to me for a beyonce music video how close can you fly to beyonce it's not close at all are you kidding me something call. happens that thing flips into her like I'll never work again. Like that's that you'll never uh, work again. And, and you'll be on the street. 
Because yeah. you cannot afford those legal in fees. Time, she, like we did a video and it was in New Orleans and this was three through three days. There was no night flying allowed. And she showed up 10 hours late. And so we didn't end up flying at all on that job. Mm-hmm. You know, we offered to just come back the next day and then it just didn't work out. So sometimes that happens. Sometimes weird stuff like that happens. But yeah. uh, I feel like as far as like client expectation, you'll have a director that has a specific shot. Maybe it's very basic, say like a car tracking shot straight down along a road, right? Which John and I, that's a Mr. Robot shot we did, which is like a two mile track into the desert yeah. of this First car. First take, nailed it. I, I didn't know how we were going to get the <laughs> shot. Strike. And then we just got it, which was awesome. So that was what we call one take Jake. One take Jake Butters. Shout out so, to Jake Butters. Jake Butters is out there. I know he's listening. He's always listening. He is. Jake, Butters. Jake Butters. Yeah, he's another guy in the, uh, in the I guess, in, in just in the commercial drone world. He's down in Florida and L.A. Um, mm. He's everywhere, honestly. Younger but, kid um, crushing it. Yeah, he's crushing it. I yeah, wanted to. Jake, I wanted to Jake a- Butters, let's try sometime. That sounds. I'm stoked. Yeah, I can't Jake, wait for that episode. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get him on and just I'm gonna light his ass up. So, um, uh, so, um, yeah. So. so there is uh, a bit of I think to answer your question, Paul. In my perspective, you yeah. asked, is it is it sales? Is yeah. it like being on set sales? I think it's, for John, I, it is. For yeah, John's I'm always selling always, him all the time. Always, be I'm like John. We got the shot. What are you doing? Like, no, no, no. You know, I, like, I'm not trying to sell the like, shot. We can do this. I'm trying. I look at it as an art form. Uh, okay, so the the, la- the last week tonight explosion. Yeah, was that you selling a shot? Yeah, they every every single FPV? every single drone move that we we had four drones in the air. Every yeah. single drone move was planned and pitched by myself, right. pretty much. Do you think so, it was? Do you think it was worth the effort? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, most definitely. But it's an art form, in a sense that I like to make the directors realize the shot by suggesting things. Okay. So, um, and I think it goes, I think that's kind of like an art that maybe I like to think I do well or whatever. I try make an effort to. John to does not- do that. Well, he does. He, he, that's one of his highlights is that he has a creative eye. He has a great uh, composition and he essentially takes he's he goes he'll go up to a director or a dp and say what are you trying to feel with the shot what's the point and then he'll kind of collaborate if they're willing uh to to find the best way to do that and and that's that's a, that's part of why it is so fun to be on yeah. set with john you know is because we can i think we can get shots that a lot of people can't get for for number one number yeah. two john is a good operator he's a great operator i know he's gonna nail it because that's something that frustrates me as a pilot is putting the dirt, the drone in dangerous situations. And then a camera operator is missing the shot because mm-hmm. that probably is the number one thing that frustrates me the most. Yeah. You know, this okay. We're doing the so shot hard to get there six times through this narrow gap in the trees and you're missing the frame each time. Like I'm not doing this more times, you know, it's not right. necessary. If you're, if you're not going to get it. We're not going to get it. It's not lose a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment in the process. Yeah, but it's that it's that power of suggestion that I like to like to do um, because honestly, they're not. I'm not in a position that you're not in a position as a camera operator, especially as a as a drone guy that that comes on set for the day. You're not being hired for your eye. Okay, they're not hiring you because you have you know what looks cool. You're hired to get their shot that they've designed ninety percent of the time. Even still, if you have an idea it's better to suggest it in like a inception kind of way, right? You plant the seed early when you asked about lens choices, you might just say, Hey, like, you know, we're doing something like really fast, like track by in the car, like maybe like a wider lens uh, would be good for that. So you can kind of see the world kind of flying by a little bit more. Yeah. You kind of allow them to say, yes, that's a good idea. Not saying, Hey, this is my idea type of thing. And that can, that happens like continuously while the drone is in the air. And that's a conversation that you're having with the director while the drone is in the air. Then you have to take that conversation and then translate it to James, who's piloting the drone, who's standing in like the bushes or like the portage on <laughs> like far away, <laughs> completely both. ignoring everything else. Yeah. So, um, 
but it's that power of suggestion, which is like an art form, which I think uh, it's going to take, you know, it takes years to, to craft. And I think it's like, you can always just get better at it. James, I guess that proactivity you... is what John is so good at, you know, is getting ahead of the questions. Like he's never sitting around waiting for someone to tell him what to do. He's like, cause there's times where we'll be on set all day and we won't get called on, yeah. you know? And I know that for personally, you know, those days suck the most, I think, because you're waiting to do something. You probably got a sunrise call and it's like coming up on sunset and you're like, we haven't done anything yet. Why did I have to be here 10 hours ago? Yeah. John's sure. been thinking about this thing for a week and next thing you know, he's not allowed to do anything. So he'll go and buzz around and stay out of the way and just be in sight line of, uh, of the AD or whoever to, to make sure they know we're ready. What's, what's the art? What's the magic to, to being recognized on set without being Annoying. interruptive? <laughs> yeah or or you like because you're like there's a flow right there's an ebb and flow the producer's pulling one way the director's pulling another the dit 100 saying you guys are all idiots you know like how do you <laughs> you know what how DIT, do you play that balance what's what's the magic well it depends where you're set up and depends on the layout of the set itself like you know it may be uh, if you're on a big set you make sure your table is set up somewhere near where people are going to be and they see the drone set up on the table sometimes they forget that they have a drone like that's happened and oh, it's yeah. like they don't know what's going on with with the different tools that they have available and they get kind of locked into like their steady cam and their cranes and they yeah. don't really remember or maybe they don't trust it i don't know uh i can tell you that every time that happens we'll have 47 takes on a steady cam and then two takes on a drone max yeah. yep john just has to be Is, close do, to get that table set up are other departments or other like teams i guess like jockeying for that same attention or mm, i don't is think it, so is it, is it just assumed players. right they're like these guys are gonna get the thing and then if we have time we go for the drones or is it are you guys like kind of like you know playing this like gladiator game where it's like no i will take time now <laughs> you know uh i mean i'm sure that does exist yeah yeah it kind of sure. depends on like how you carry i have i have very limited bit. like set set experience mine i've been mostly <clears> working with like you know, smaller agencies, smaller productions. I've been on but one an interesting major point. set. Yeah. So I'm curious, I'm curious to know what the because, politics are like. Well, sometimes you have a gimbal on your drone. There may be a gimbal operator on the set and it may be the same shot. Maybe they're calling on the drone to do the gimbal guy's job. Yeah, but you he's know, got an RLF. Reason. You got a little X7. I mean, uh, we may have, we an, have an RA Mini, mini LF. <laughs> Yeah. So like, you know, but sometimes they don't even think about the guy that has the ground, the ground camera. Sometimes they say, right. we need the drone to follow this car wheel a mile <laughs> down the road. Yeah. And I get that asked to me like all the time. And I'm like, that's not a drone shot. You know, like yeah. we can start with it for a little bit and track it that like, you want me one foot off the deck. Like I can do that for a hundred yards. Yeah. As long as and I'm then I start to lose here. perspective. Right. And then, you know, but, but I can do it a whole lot more accurately if we're in a van next to this car with a gimbal hanging out the side, you know, so that's like another yeah. guy's position. So maybe, you know, if you start getting into that battle and then people are union, for instance, it starts to kind of get messy where people are like, you're doing my job. I'm going to tell the union that this isn't going to fly, yeah. you know, no pun intended, but that <laughs> does happen. Most of the time though, I feel like the drone team is, segregated off as not a splinter unit but like we're there for a day or two days yeah. usually max uh, and they could be shooting for weeks or a month or more uh, so they they're kind of more relaxed about their time i think they are you know in the know for what they're required to do that day yeah i don't think that there's like anyone that's jumping at the bit to try and get, <laughs> sell their shot to the director at that moment but uh drone kind of has to do that i feel like Hmm. so yeah you kind of have to defend yourself a little bit um your capabilities and like your readiness to work i think that's a big part of it they'll kind of figure out in my experience the directors if you've done your job of setting those expectations with pre-production with the pre-production call you know trying to learn yourself by asking the right questions ahead of time as far as what the creative what what is the creative if you have those calls you laid the groundwork to not be ignored you know if you show up and you're quiet and you just assume that they're gonna say hey this is where the drone is playing or this is this is this is a drone shot and you're like in the back somewhere they could easily forget about you 
So it's about building And then they come at you at the back end and say, hey, you know, we didn't even know you were there. <laughs> like, Yeah, no it's worry. not good. You, were, yeah. Wait, you weren't so, there. So they'll not use you and then also be like, yo, you didn't do anything? Usually, I mean, it's not like it happens all the time, but like a producer might be like, the director couldn't find you and they wanted you to shoot. And so we're cutting your rate in half. You know, they may say something like that and it's like, well, that's not going to work. We're contracted, but we were ready. And this is like, it's better to avoid the whole thing yeah. and be nearby and be willing. Like you should be known immediately on set because you're going to be giving a safety briefing to the entire crew if yep. you're doing your job properly. Yep. Uh, and that's uh, expectation management. There's certain companies that I've worked with where the like lead producer that for the drone team uh, is very engaging and direct communication with the director and tells him what's possible, what's not possible. And we don't speak to them specifically ourselves. That person will come back and describe what needs to happen to us. And it almost puts a, like a separation between us as operators and the crew and the director, which is uh, a really excellent way to operate because you take all of like the frustrations or stress. you know impossibilities and stress from the director and DP side you know because that guy might have a, a mad tone or something that sounds like disappointed sure. and then you come back and you say all right guys this is what we're doing this is what they want we're gonna go up in five and take care of that and it's like okay cool we're ready to go you know and you just miss that whole like emotional side yeah. that you may be reading too deep into it doesn't even make sense. Uh, so that's like a really good way to operate. And there's like a couple of companies that I've worked with that, that do it that way. Actually, fun story, kind of a side thing. I got hired on a job with one team for this director that wanted these shots. They were unrealistic. It was like 30 miles an hour of wind, like tracking shots. Wasn't, wasn't going to happen. We, bet, we, we tried our best and they ended up like... We did the day and they ended up like releasing that team for the show from the show. Right. Well, because I'm a freelance operator, you mean fired. People, yes. <laughs> fired from the show. Releasing, because I'm like, a freelance operator. I got hired again with another team for the same show. Oh, geez. right. And I'm like, Oh shit, this guy's going to recognize me. <laughs> but you know, he didn't <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> and we crushed it. And it all the, the only thing that changed was the expectations that they had, you know, for what was yeah. realistic yeah. and the communication. And like, I, that was a, a learning experience for me. Like I, that was super valuable. Yeah. It was wild because he was a totally different guy on the second half of that job. That's the thing. Sometimes you just get unlucky. Like you don't know who you're dealing with. So you kind of just have to trust your, trust your crew, trust your gear, be prepared Get ready to just get ready to crush. It. Just get the gold. Get All right. Ready to crush it. Get ready to crush it. James Sykes is on the stick. Johnny <laughs> Drones is on the other sticks. Let's crush it. What's um, a, what's the what's the policy on foul language on this show? <laughs> is there, none. Is there any? Yeah, drop it. No, we can we can say what it's all dog shit. Fuck it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's all dog shit. Fuck it is a classic expression that came from James <laughs> after crushing it all day watching getting all psyched up watching playback and just realizing in that it really like doesn't matter at the end of the day dude there's nothing better than dailies coming back and they're just like oh my god this is so yeah. sick yeah the other side of that coin is when you're as the pilot and you're like man this is how i saw that shot happening in my head and it's gonna be so epic and then you see it and it's completely different than you thought it was gonna be like oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> you know? but, not that well, it's that, bad it's just different yeah yeah that's the thing. That's the thing that um, I I want to kind of get into next is the difference between how you operate, James, and how Nurk operates. So we have, we have we have. Like two... I'm about to get thrown under the bus. No, no, no <laughs> buses here. It's just if anyone's getting thrown under the bus. It's me. Okay. Uh, okay. It sounds good. Shots. That's probably true. So um, John John's been taking shots all night. Yeah, I got plenty more shots here. So. Um, that's true. I do have shots. Um, so <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah. So you guys, Nurk, you're in the goggles, man. I mean, you are the camera. You are the drone. I am the drone. You are the drone. You like in your essence, right? You you say your prayer before you take off. You become the drone. You transform into the drone. You get the shot as the drone. I maybe get the shot. Maybe get the this shot as awesome. drone. James, <laughs> on the other the hand, uh, is not the drone. James is pretty much a rock star 
who happens to be flying a drone as his instrument. And a lot of times you're not even like looking at the screen. Most of the time, honestly, you're operating like by choice from your iPhone. Like I've seen, yeah. like you have I like, uh, I don't use iPads or crystal sky. Crystal skies are the worst things I've ever what? used in my really? life. Every time they, they oh, fail geez. you every time. Pretty much. Uh, but you crash. prefer your phone. He just has his iPhone. has a fast processor, his... man. It's, it's, you know. Oh, gosh. It's this big. I don't need anything else. You know? I am very surprised. Me too. Every time I look over there and he's like, I mean, seriously, you've flown like some major, major work. Uh, not that we didn't have those other options available. It's just like. Actually, I'll just... take them off. Yeah, you slap on your iPhone and send it on a heavy lift drone, which will fly the DJI Go. And this you know, this app. is when you're operating or cam up? Piloting. Piloting. Yeah. Okay. It's very rare that I'm, I'm more okay operating. with that. But so the thing at the is, same in, time, in my, like if you get a thing, phone a call mid flight, like he'll answer you're on it. airplane mode. You're on airplane mode. Well, okay. I have answered it, but you know, <laughs> sometimes you could be Postmates looking for you. You don't know what's going on. So, it's a reference tool for me, you know, yeah. like yeah. the FPV screen is going to be the same size on my phone, basically, as it is on that iPad. Once I pop it in and out, yeah, yeah, pretty close. It's all I need, John. I don't need those fancy HD goggles that you've got leaving in backpacks on corners in Seattle. That's true. Right? I have lost my fair share of goggles. But but yeah, I use it as a reference and I have my line of sight flight path and I'll, I'll use uh, landmarks like treetops or uh different buildings or whatever to to mark points and i'll fly that line consistently i'll I'll reference the telemetry on the phone for distance and height Mm -hmm. and cross references with where i see the drone is and then i'll fly the path and if i need to i'll reference john's image if we're tracking and i can know to slow down or speed up Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's all I need. I don't need anything else. I need the voltage. That's what do you I need. think. Do you think you're limiting yourself by only operating line of sight? I'm not saying you I mean, should go beyond possible. line of sight. I'm saying there's a combination of stuff. But I like, don't have what, a problem what would, with FPV at all. Like I'll use I'm, that I'm not, no, 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 I'm not trying to say that you are, but like what, if you took it to the next level, like if there was another level of capability by being able to operate FPV, do you think that there's something there? Like some line that the drone could move through combined with the dual op setup that would make something truly unique, that would tell a story from a new perspective. You're opening up your ability a little bit for finding gaps in places like trees, like you, sure. you know, where you don't have that depth. But at the same time, on a, on a system like an Inspire that is not all that responsive and is kind of laggy, you're also in a playing a dangerous game, I think, with like how far, how fast can I move this thing away from a branch, you Fair know, play. before it like takes it. And you guys have so much more control with those with those quads that you build. Is there a solution? Is there a purpose to stepping up the drones game so that the camera can get a different shot? What is the the perfect sy- system? That's the question. Right? What's the so perfect like, I system? Want to, I want to be able to see where the drone is in space. So okay. FPV, right? Yep. But I also need to be able to look over and see the subject that I'm tracking and be able to snap back to dead center, whatever that may be. Sure. And that system, like, I mean, people have been getting pretty close to something that's kind of amazing. I think I've seen like some teams have like five screens that's like a sphere almost around. And uh, there's talks of using VR cameras and stuff like that. But I don't know. Like for me, here's my thing. I need these drones to do a lot of other things before they do that. You know, I need these things to go about twice as fast. Okay. Okay. This Inspire needs to be twice as fast. I need them to fix the antennas so that when you yaw the nose to yourself, it doesn't cut out feed on half of the fleet, right? Because like every third Inspire that you yaw at distance cuts out because some some broken in the antennas, all right? Sure. Awful. We need an HD uh, FPV feed like they've kind of done with the other DJI stuff. We need to be able to change the exposure of that camera absolutely that's a nightmare you can't and uh the camera on the uh, inspire it's got like the 45 or the straight and it's oh just those cameras okay, at okay, all okay. times 
God forbid you're flying into the sun, you just see nothing. Gotcha. Yeah, for for those are listening, they're like, yeah, the Inspire does have, a, have an FPV camera. It does uh, have a pilot's FPV camera in addition to the cinema camera <laughs> on the bottom. <laughs> if they if you spent all of your budget on the camera on the bottom and then took about ten bucks and threw it on the FPV camera, that's about where you're sitting for the. Yeah, yeah. I remember but our it, first question is how do I change the exposure of this thing? And it's like you can't. I'm like, yeah. oh great. And then the other just, thing needs to happen. Just take is a pair of sunglasses and mount it in front. The pilot, and I've seen people do stuff like that. Yeah. The pilot and the operator need to be able to be as far away from each other as they need to be. Because most of the time, the camera operator needs to be a production with the with the director and the DP and maybe plugged into a you know, video village. I may need to be completely on the other side of the, the deal, you know, yeah. by that tree line and, and seeing, you know, ideally, and I know they have the multi-link and stuff. I haven't had much success with it, but sure. John maybe has. It's a 50, 50 shot that the multi-links are going to work, which is another one of DJI's incredible products that, you know, it's just <laughs> a great idea, but you know, when you're using it as a professional and it doesn't work, you're better off just you ripping it bad. off and throwing it in the bag. But I'm being picky. I mean, the shots that we've been able to create with these drones is, is pretty impressive. Yeah, but yeah. I, I like thinking about the blue skies, right? It's you. There's an opportunity to be thoughtful about what is possible and what can be done that no no one else has done before, and and that that excites me. That's I think that's what people are listening for. So it's one of the more creative things in that regard that I've seen that I, I've only seen like a couple of times, and I don't know, maybe you guys have seen more of this, but there was one kid that I saw on YouTube that had actually uh, on like a Mavic, I think, or a Phantom reversed the controls so that he could do these epic dronies flying away from himself. So he's not flying backwards. Okay. And he ends up flying through like trees, tight gaps, tents, like all kinds of crazy stuff from distance, you know, all like straight line, line of sight, but the camera's facing backwards and it's not reversed. So that's sick. I'd never thought to reverse the controls until I saw that video, I've still never done it, but I think it's a cool concept. You know, people are getting out of the box to creativity and figuring out new ways to get shots. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I mean, I, that's, I, that's the whole industry is figuring out new ways to get shots, right? It's what's the better camera? What's the better gimbal? What's the better car mount system? What's the better, you know, it doesn't matter if it's drone, handheld or otherwise. It's all yeah. about how do we inspire and create in a new way? that no one's ever seen before. And I think because drones are such a new, young, unique industry, you have an opportunity to push the limits of that. Do you agree? I do agree. I think that they're only going to be able to do so many things though. You know, I think free fly took a huge shot at uh, kind of developing something different with the top mount when they came out with that on the Alta. Sure. Yeah. Like that was really impressive and kind of game changing at the time. And not that, everyone asks for that, but it's definitely like a different look and something unique, uh, going straight up something and not seeing anything hindering your, your view, like a prop, yeah. you know? So that's pretty impressive. I don't know. Like for me, I'd, I'd prefer the, the leaps and bounds of that technology to be utilized in like stadiums to replace sky cams or cable cams and stuff like that. Like getting okay. the GPS data so dialed that it, can't go outside of that area to hurt people. You know what I mean? Yep. Like those are the ways that I think the technologies should be improving for commercial use, you know, music festivals. Like we got to figure out ways to, well, if they ever happen again, uh, figure out how to shoot those safely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've seen some videos that are amazing and incredible content and, and just totally fully unsafe. illegal. Yeah. <laughs> fully illegal. And you know, they got away with it. Like, it didn't hurt anybody and it was yeah like I don't get those that. are some of the most amazing shots that anyone will ever have but dangerous and not worth the risk you know yeah totally so i mean I as, those, as are, one those of the, are the places that i feel like we really need to improve so you know those kinds of things aside what sort of create creative aspects do you want drones to improve in terms of like what you as a creative person can do like what what's your dream shot right now the one that pays the most. <laughs> I don't that's know. fair. That's I don't fair, know, man. I mean, that's very pragmatic, you know, but that's fair. At the end of the day, man, who's uh, whoever's paying can just tell me what they want, and I'll figure out a way to get it. You know. But you but don't sit around thinking I, about like how can I? I used to. <laughs> I see. You don't I used have the, to. The band and then, anymore. like John was saying, you don't always get to choose, and they, sure. maybe they shut you down. It's like I've been sh 
it's kind of jaded, but I've been shut down so many times, like with like, oh, this could be like, I'll get on a set and we'll have like a hyper car. And they'll be like, this is what we're going to like. We can shoot so many cool angles of this. And then they'll be like, all right, well, we just need a top down, follow him down this uh, straight. He's going to make a left. You're going to continue going straight. And then that's it. We're done. And it's like, but we could do so much cool stuff. But no, we don't need it. We don't want it. That's it. And it's like, that's the sort of thing that kind of like, man, I've had that so many different times. It kind of hurts the soul. How do you, <laughs> how do you keep going in the face of that? Like if, if you're because every not fulfilling five shoots that, that happens, you get one shoot where you can kind of become creative and okay. you find that director that allows you a little bit of freedom. And then once you see, cause, cause think about this, like when we all started in this business, sure. Especially you, Nurk, you'll get this, like John was pretty terrible when he started, but Nurk, when Definitely. you started, like every shot you were coming out with blew people away. You know what I mean? Like people are like, how the hell did you do that? Like that sure. is insane. Sure. Same with like us when we were starting, you'd have a phantom yeah. with like a if- hard mounted camera and no downlink. And they'd be like, whoa, that's insane. How did you get that shot? You know? And then that technology progressed so quickly that people didn't understand how you were backing up as if you were a steady cam, And then you went over a shrub and they're like, whoa, how the hell? Did that happen? Maybe it's a crane. And then you rise up and now you're like, clearly that's not a crane because it's a hundred feet in the air. Right. You know, so those shots that really like confuse people. And I think that's going back to what shout out for John and uh, Dexter doing that uh, greatest showman. That was like one of those yeah. shots. It's like, how the hell was that done? You know, like, it's going to be, gonna be the, on my gravestone boys. I personally didn't. This is I didn't the greatest the show. I, tuned I know you for, did. I tuned in for that shot. I got the hell out. Just All watch right. it on the airplane already. That's where that's my that's my uh wherever I want to like you know I'm like ah, I got like three hours I was, I'll watch this I was watching uh Peter McKinnon this yesterday yeah. and they uh, were new, they talked the about gimbal. greatest they talked about greatest showman oh. for friggin three minutes yeah they didn't mention your shot specifically but they're talking about gimbals and the way that it was shot so I, I assume yeah. that that scene had to be had to have been on their minds yeah, I mean, I mean that was a, great that was a shot that was a shot designed by Seamus McGarvey. I mean, incredible DP. That that was an example where like we didn't have any creativity. We were brought in to like do this shot to create this shot, which we talked about before, which was like design in the computer. I just had a conversation with for another show we're working on with a director yesterday, a phone call, and it's a really cool potential scene involving uh, motorcycle stunt work doing uh, in downtown in a city downtown in New Jersey. And there's going to be like a motorcycle chase and a sweet like burnout 180 on the bike. Here's where I start to like, yeah, here's where I start to inject my little like, yeah, my FPV capabilities and it's questions he's like uh, well, how about would you is this what you want yeah i'm like are you thinking of a, like you know okay so like i see the boards right they give me the sketch yeah. uh the storyboards of what they want i'm like okay so i'm seeing like a little crane like a crane move on this uh on this uh third board here craning down but like after after that move are we do you want to like chase the you know, chase the bike down the street a little bit, you know, it's something like, like a Russian arm, like a camera car kind of action arm kind of shot, something we can do. We have the capabilities now with some of the newer technology that we've done, that we've been testing with drift cars and other types of, of stuff. I, and I, and I explained, I put these goggles on and we can confidently like fly the heavy lift drone now, or the inspire through smaller gaps and closer to the action safely. It's all, it always have to end it. You always have to end these conversations with safely, safely you know, it's a magical yeah. adjective. Well, so. John is not a synonymous with safety, but John, John is a, John is a great daredevil pilot. Okay. This guy belongs in an FPV drone. All right. He has a specific switch set up in his FPV drone that when it's inverted, he goes blackout screen just for the kick. Yeah. By the time he gets back right up, <laughs> he's got his feedback. I do drug. like the, uh, yeah, I like to uh, try to confuse myself. Uh, <laughs> with, like that's why I like flying line of sight so much because it's like that challenge. You know, you just am like, I going forward or backward? Or yeah, I don't know. Let's find out. And then you got to get out of there. It's like part of like building oh. your skill base. 
and it's on fire. Well, that'll happen from time to time, but but yeah, John's been like kind of a, a proponent of pushing those types of shots uh, that that I kind of fell in love with at the beginning of, of my career as a drone pilot. When I f- first got into this, uh, everyone told me it was a stupid idea. <laughs> they were like, "You're gonna well, you're spend- going paragliding instead of working." So, mom, pop, I got to get uh, my paragliding license uh, to get paid around here to work yeah. with some drones. That's so Listen, insane. man, I had that hard-earned money from paper out waiting for me. There was no parental help, okay? But no, seriously, like what happened was the Wild West days, I call it, which is like when we started, I was shooting yeah. a ton of weddings. You know, I was doing weddings initially with the drones because that's like the only people I could get to hire me with the drone. I, I remember taking it to an office and they got showing the guy, he's like, I've already seen drones, they're shit. And then I'm like, not this one, you know? And then they had a two axis stabilized gimbal. He's like, it's amazing. It's going to be at every event, you know, and you pay me like 300 bucks to do it. You know, I was like, awesome. At that time, it's like, you were paying me 300 bucks to shoot the whole damn wedding. And now I just have to show up with the drone and do that. I'm like, sweet, done deal. It, those were the kind of the start days, but that's, you do some kind of ballsy stuff at those weddings too, because there's, those are tight spaces. <laughs> Granted they're phantoms and no one cares, but starting out, I spent 10 grand building an s1000 and i remember my entire family my friends were like you spent 10 grand on a remote control airplane i'm like no this is going to be the future (laughs) they're like that is the stupidest thing i've ever heard (laughs) and look at him now he's on the good flight podcast this is it i've made it you know (laughs) i can afford philip's hue uh philip's hue bulbs and put him in my fancy lamps behind me actually those are off brand but sometimes you just pop it in and you just change it up if it ever works, pop it in. Change it. Up. Let's all change James up our Sykes, lights right now. Twenty. Should we change 20. them? Oh shit! For I, those uh, uh, who are listening to the show, uh, yeah. we like to change our lighting schemes throughout the show. I can't um, change my lighting scheme, but here's a bar scene. <laughs> I like that. Screen, That's a good screen scene. setup classic it's my my one of my air views logo <laughs> that's that's we're how we're going to get the sponsorship here's a, here's a puppy uh, there's a puppy there you change there you any color we want okay here's some more fire boys are you guys getting ready for this all right the heat we're going rapid fire is that we are we're going rapid fire we should we do a rapid fire segment. a little bit listen one time i was flying a race with john graham and i fell asleep oh, at boy. the sticks should we talk how, did about you, that? how did you know I was going to ask that? You just burst my bubble, dude. I was going to ask. I don't even know how I was going to frame that question. Let's just get into That's the story. Why I took it over. Were you partying Things. too hard the night before? Like, is this too much uh, racing on the go-kart track or what? <laughs> I have no idea. He literally, I swear to God, the drone was in the air. I'm cam opping. I'm listening to the director, and Doing we a lazy were. Job. Yep. We were I'm prima uh, donnaing. Okay, I was in the front seat of a suburban, dude. It was plush, and that drone was hovering out there, you know, as they do because they're so great machines, and they mm-hmm. do hover really, really nicely. Mm-hmm. I he was unresponsive. James, do you copy? James, <laughs> we're, James, we're ready to move out and ready. Camera eleven, ready. Camera eleven. <laughs> <laughs> no movement on the sticks nothing comatose i look over and literally he's back in the chair like this <laughs> with his stupid iphone controlling the you know what i mean more or less and i'm just with like stupid iphone how do you just, justify that james there's no justifying an action <laughs> like that it's just something you gotta own <laughs> you know pe- people you say know, sleeping I mean, the on the job in jest like <laughs> i fell asleep on the job <laughs> You yeah, look- it's become a, a bit of a joke. I can fly in my sleep, you know? Okay. Uh, it's it's basically the drone's hovering 2,000 feet away, <laughs> waiting for this shot. You know, I'm bored. John's taking forever to frame it up, and I'm just like, Geez, <laughs> what's new? Let me just shut my eyes for a second. Next thing you know, I hear him on the open comm. James, James, are you... Are you fucking sleeping, dude? I'm like, no. Was he was totally out. What, what is what does the FAA think about pilots sleeping behind the sticks? Uh, I don't know. I well, wonder what the stature of limitations is. Or whatever. That's it is, a good question. I don't think there's a rule written about it because you know technically we're still over track property. The only thing might be the line of sight question because my eyes were closed. Well, I was your uh, I was your visual observer, so I had a line of sight on the drone. You sure did. Yeah, but it's it's probably more like towards like the. I don't know. It's not, not my most sleeping while moment, flying, but it's job. something I have to bring up because when I'm on the Good Flight podcast, as stupid as I may We're look, telling the good story. I just have to be fully honest with the audience, you know? 
sleeping. And people are bringing the fire on me, dude. People are bringing the fire at that, but it's it's the truth. It happens. I hope I'm not is. perfect. And uh, you're asleep, man. You're you know far from perfect. Florida. I was in Florida. Uh, time difference. You know, I don't know. I don't Sebring. know what the difference was. Like, it was Sebring? I think it was Sebring. Was it Sebring? It was yeah, Sebring. Yes. Florida, so. It was Sebring. And that it's truck, the truck is boring as shit. Okay. We've, Sorry. we've gone from true. falling like asleep with the sticks to trashing Florida. Rapid fire questions. Here we go. We're sticking with okay, it. Okay, go with the next one. Do you rapid. remember what happened at Laguna Seca? We had an issue, another issue while you were at the sticks. I believe it was involving some bad chili or bad Mexican food. Go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were, at first, I thought you were going to uh, talk about the Mexican uh, karaoke night, but that's a different story for a different See. day. Yeah, I don't know how it happened, but I fully shit my pants mid-flight. That <laughs> happened, dude. You what? I don't know why. He pooped yeah, himself. Yeah, the stakes were high, man, and I was pumping. Were you through, just that nervous? Just... No. It, no, I wasn't wait, nervous. Wait, so you, uh, so you operate from the porta potty, the car, but you still shit your pants. <laughs> That's a good. He basically. There was the porta potty a hundred feet away. <laughs> I didn't believe him. I didn't believe him. Honestly. It's hard. You got to like, it's, 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 it's not with a, a grain of salt. verify sort of situation. Yeah. You work with a bunch yeah. of characters in this business and clearly there's a lot of locker room talk going on during the day. It keeps everybody sane. Honestly, it helps keep the stress away. I'm a big proponent in the locker room talk. And when James uh-huh. tells me that, uh, you know, he shit himself, I'm just like, okay, buddy, like, <laughs> let's get back to work here. Like, you know, <laughs> And then I go to take a leak myself, and there it is in the bottom of the porta potty is his underwear, just like it's shitty knows. underwear. You he know? got it. Ri- he got rid of it. I cleaned up the evidence, <laughs> put it away. Oh my goodness, great! I'm not. Goodness. I don't regret it. I don't regret it. You know, <clears throat> something that happens. You got to do what you got to do. All right, James, we're going to keep this rapid fire segment going. Keep it going. We're going to be talking drone stunts right now. Drone stunts. What is the craziest thing you've ever flown on a drone? It could be a camera. Oh, it could be I have a, lot of know, a prop. Yeah, let's bring it. Ooh, the craziest thing. There's two things that come to mind that, that are the really kind of the more, more fun uh, non-camera payloads that I've flown. But one takes the cake for sure. I did a spot for jurassic park it was like a promotional what? event for jurassic park's latest movie or ride or something i can't even remember either but way i, mean, I was jurassic flying park. <laughs> i was flying a 12 foot pterodactyl bird under my heavy lift <laughs> around the hollywood sign 12 and underneath feet. 12 foot wingspan Whoa. underneath Whoa. the gr- the griffin okay coaxial quad 29 inch propellers 12 foot bird and what was under that 12 foot bird a full size dummy wearing a backpack like a person dressed in like a person okay so it's like a pterodactyl carrying a person that like past the hollywood it up. sign and we had a Jeez. servo rigged up to it so we were prepared to drop the body <laughs> straight Which off of illegal. the uh, pterodactyl well, well it's, it's a good it's, thing because it's it illegal didn't work. planet it didn't work i mean technically as long as you're not over people or property yeah. or not damaging things i don't think it is legal so which Wait. is a crazy rule like you can litter from an airplane yeah it, it is legal out. is what you're saying right yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay sorry i just want to make sure um as long this as was 333 three, three days or this was recent this was no this was last year <laughs> dang it was crazy yeah pterodactyl with the dummy on the bottom definitely the craziest payload i've flown what's that way for sure All up. that's got to be close to the it was well designed the, i mean austin from la drones had this 54.5 stuff designed, like, pounds 54.9 yeah it was it was Nine. uh we got it a little lighter weight than, i think it was 36 pounds wow cheers to that uh, cheers to awesome. 36 pounds uh, you know what? I think we covered a lot of these other hot seat questions, but I'm going to bring the noise. I got to pay tribute to Pops. I love your dad. Let's talk about. Oh, God. Come on. Let's talk about John Sykes real quick. It's where he gets what all of his hell? charms. From. <laughs> it's wait, where he gets all wait, of his charms. Wait, 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 wait. John Sykes? Oh, wait, yeah. So Pops is literally your father? Well, dad, we dad. talked about we talked about dad from LA Drones. Dad yeah. is dad. Dad is yeah. not our actual dad, but he is uh, our actual dad. Okay. I'm talking about James's actual dad. It's where he gets all of his talent from, honest to God. Your dad also finds That's a, good with the fingers. It's in the family. 
I guess. I don't know. James My dad's dad, a guitar player. James dad. Look at this. He gets all choked up about it. James I'm dad nervous. is uh, John Sykes from White Snake. Okay. The guy that wrote. Here I go again on my own. <laughs> I've been down the other road. I have a note. Oh my god, I'm Those singing pipes. on the podcast. Those pipes. Dang. Yeah. It's uh it's a true story if anyone cares. But but you know what? It was it made for an interesting upbringing <laughs> <laughs> for sure. He was uh he still is a uh, very funny guy and uh He'll call me, and he's not afraid to waste at least thirty minutes of my time telling me stories each day. So every day, and he loves story. you. I think I'd say he does. Okay, he that does. that's good. Uh, do we got a, a video? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love your dad. Uh, well, I've never met him, but I have talked to him on the phone quite a bit, <laughs> and uh, I'm very close to you. So that's like kind of like love in a cousin he's cousin like way. Your stepdad. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, do we have any videos lined up? I think now it's a good time to uh, get into yeah. our sponsored segment, right, Paul? To, Take it away. To bring our drone f drone video sommelier, Winston Garthwaite. Uh, so this p- section is sponsored by Airviews. It's basically YouTube for drone videos. Tons of awesome drone content. And uh, me, John, and James. Wow, this is a super biblical podcast right now. We got mm. we got we got Paul. John and James and then Winston. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to take a look at some uh, different drone clips. Might be FPV, might be standard cinema drone. And uh, we're going to just talk about what we see, what we like, what we don't. We're going to, we might uh, talk crap about some of them and then get called out in the comments by the actual creators, which is always fun. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's what's going to happen. So Somalia, Winston, Garthwaite, the first what you got? All right, gentlemen, I got a few different things for us here. Airviews is kind yeah. enough to send us some good links. What is Airviews uh, serving up today? Would they got any specials on the table? You know, I... <laughs> house Red, perhaps? <laughs> house Red. Um, so there is another one from a city we visited last week. Uh, last week, I believe it was, oh. we went to Rome. And that's actually where our first clip is from. Uh, I'm not going to let you get off of this thing before we talk about the go-kart stuff. So. That's not, It's going to happen. What do you want to talk about with the go-karts? Dude, I'm talking Let's about talk the most about dangerous it. go-kart track in America. All right. Okay? <laughs> Let's talk, talk about, about it. I'm not kidding. Dangerous go-kart track in America. This is the last thing. I just have to talk about this because it's 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 uh it's something that without fail every time when we're going to film a race, somehow there's a there's a go-kart track right outside or inside the track property. We're talking and Coda John, has a track. We're we're talking uh, Indianapolis. Actually, well, that's where Nurk and I went karting indoors uh, at that place. There is a go kart track down south that is like legendary, legendarily <laughs> dangerous. People, and if you're into that, go there. It's uh, what is it? It's a uh, road Atlanta. It's outside of road Atlanta. Atlanta. Yep. Oh my God. Okay. You know, you get to these go-kart tracks with your friends and they're like, okay, here's your, your sock and your helmet and you're, you're, you're getting in. This is your safety briefing. No, let me tell you about this little track. Okay. Number one, these carts are unrestricted. That's number one. They're gas powered go-kart tricks, track surface, not prepped at all. Cone, whoop, it's like barriers, uh, cones at certain points, no <laughs> seat belts. Okay. The right no way. seat belts. They said it's safer without them. They said they told me it's safer <laughs> without them. That and used to be uh, true of Formula One, actually. Back in like the I think that as late as the eighties, drivers thought it was oh better to be thrown clear than it was to <laughs> burn in the flames. Yep. I don't know if I can agree with that or not. I'm not a pro. <laughs> well, I tell none you. of us um, do. <laughs> <laughs> um, People weren't smart in the eighties. From, ex- from experience, I don't think that that's correct. Go ahead. <laughs> because we, uh, you know, a long day of uh, flying drones, probably eight hours and 10 hours pop. On. I'm like, John, I'm tired. I don't think we can do this. He's like, we're going to hit the track, dude. That's the end of it. We're not going That's back the to the hotel it. yet. Plus, we're also coming off a long day as work is all of the crew from the different Ferrari race teams. Teams. Okay. Like we're talking like a few hundred Italians, you know. full on Italians. Italians. Like these are Italians, small Italian Italians. men. They're ready. And they're still wearing the Ferrari shit. Okay. By the way. Yeah. Of okay. So we you go up to the rent. window. We're, yeah. We go up to the window. We're like, okay, how much is this? It's like 
okay, it's 30 bucks a race or 15 bucks a race. John's like, I'll take 40. This guy no, just I got, buys a I didn't pack get 40. Of, I got a pack. I got, I still have races on you my like car. 10, you got like 10 races, 10, 12 races or something. Yeah, I like to race. Baby. I'm like, we're not, these races are like eight minutes long. I mean, this is, that's yeah. a long time. No, for anybody that's not spent much time go karting, like by the end of the second race, if you're not prepped for it, your body is done. Like it is, it is a workout. It's hurting. It is hurting. I'm saying that as a big guy. John is not a big guy. He still will be hurting by the end of it. I'm a big, I'm a medium guy, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but you're in shape, so fuck off. I'm a stout boy, and uh, John beats me almost every time, and I've chalked that up to power to weight. We're on the same level. We're we're the same. We're even. John, what do you weigh? Uh, Uh, 185. James? I'm 215. Okay, I'm 260. Uh-huh. See, so that's I not lose. fair. You can't no race in the same yeah, class. I'm done. I'm out. You know what I mean? I I'm can't willing, race in the same class. I'm willing to put extra weight in my car. No one brings the weight. I'm not Let's bringing go. the weight. I'll bring the weight. I'm just saying like 40 pounds in a go-kart is pretty serious, dude. Like that's – think about it. And so anyways, John's on his high horse over there, like 140 pounds, whatever he weighs. <laughs> Getting my and first so we get out know, like best track. lap and but best lap of the week, best lap of the month, <laughs> everywhere. I, I mean, go. he is good. He is. He is getting it down. Okay, he's getting it done. So we get out on the track. We're revving up. I'm like, hey, buddy, is good car you got me in here? He's like, they're all the same. No, Shut they're the not. Up. They're not all the same. Okay. Alabama, Next yeah, thing uh, you know, Georgian likes like smoking cigs and uh, <laughs> yeah. At night. So you want to get the they're good all car? The same. And he's the like, car over you know, here. he's it's got number the little, 43. You know, he's got the little Italian guy in the fast car over there. But yeah, uh, long story short, John and I were in decent cars. Okay. They weren't the fastest. They weren't the slowest. We're ripping around this track, green flag waving. I'm getting a barrage of Italians all over this place. And somewhere around the third or fourth lap, I think one of these little bastards fucking T bones me. I go flying out of the cart onto the pavement now i'm <laughs> laying across the track okay i'm like scrambling to get back in this guy's like doesn't care about the he's like you hit the barrier so he's like readjusting the barrier he's not worried about the cart or me or anything i'm like pop back in the cart go finish the race get out of harm's way we finish the race john wins and i'm like john i was thrown from my cart and he goes no i'm like yeah, no idea. No seatbelt, you know. No idea. I got full T-bone. Most dangerous go kart track in America for sure. Where is it again? Road Atlanta, right outside of Road Atlanta, dang, in awesome. Georgia. That's where I'm headed. And he right still now. has about ten races left. <laughs> I do. Let's do it. They don't expire, apparently. Yeah, we went back two years later and raced like two or three races. <laughs> they still honored it. That's amazing. Yeah, they still honored it. <laughs> All right, All right. Uh, back to Winston. Winston. All right, Let's do this. we're going to continue our sponsored segment. James, you can't take this money John didn't away from really us. add anything to that, but uh, no, yeah. he's just like, yeah, I whipped your ass, <laughs> and you got ejected. I didn't, I didn't see it. He's like, I heard about car. it. You'll go faster. You didn't hear. You didn't see it because you were in front of me. That's right, baby. All right, uh, let's see these videos. I want to see these crazy videos and critique some pilots and their and their yeah. skills. All Welcome right, guys. Back. So as I was talking with you guys, I got one from uh, Italy here. I was, I saw this and I had to include it because of last <laughs> week's. Thank and you. James, remember that uh, a good percentage of our viewers are audio only. So describe what you see and what you do and don't like. That's a great. Uh, also, note. anyone listening, go watch on YouTube. It's better there. You're going to want to see my burnt face if you haven't. <laughs> I like listening. Uh, shout out to all the listeners out there. Forearms. Roma. All right, I'm Caput, liking it so Mundi. far. We got some leading lines. What's, what's the name of this pilot here? All right. So this is from uh, Alta Movie. Uh, I believe Alta it's a Mundi. production company that does stuff. Okay. All right, That's gentlemen, cool. here we go. Roma Caput Mundi. One axis drone movement. Cool. It's all over the place. Uh, I don't like that. I am not a fan already. It's too basic. Why are they so quick? Cut? Uh, maybe it's the cuts. Is this meant to be like stock footage? What is this? It's it's a reel. That's cool. This I like the, I like the reflection. That's good. I like the uh, the the foreground and background. That's good. I don't know what we're looking at there. St. Petersburg Square. Yeah, but well, well, I, can I can tell see you like this is clearly a single op. This is a clearly a single op situation, and yeah. it might be. We got a nice long lens, where... like maybe like a thirty-five mil lens. Looks that's pretty cool. Nice, nice. Yeah, I agree with that, Nurk. and I also agree with the the single op potential okay. there. I like um, that little bird in the frame with the Coliseum in the background, mm-hmm. sunset. <laughs> 
It's nice. It's a it's little. Not, it's is it really green to you, you guys? Can't point a camera. You can't point a camera in the wrong direction in a place like this. Yep. You know, like I just yeah. think everything looks good. I think are you just saying? Very, oh, very it's unfair. Basic. They had an advantage. No, I think no, he's I saying think, it's I just, think they've, it's, they've squandered the moment a little bit. I think that okay. there's a lot of potential here. Well, the fact that you were—I don't even know if you're allowed to fly in these places, but this, like, there's two guards standing I, outside of this. I always assume they have permission. Yes. Well, they now, have to because I think the Rome does, Rome police. They have their, does like, anyone think this looks police. really, really green and really blue? Uh, it there could be a, a sh- cinematic color edit by their yeah. terms. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. At least it's color. What What would you do different here, James? Well, I just don't like how short the clips are. I think okay. that you can play with a lot of let, these shots. Let, them, uh, let the moment hang. There's also very little like cl- close proximity forward movement. Like I did, I don't know how close they're allowed to get. That's the thing. Like you can go right up to these things. And there's gaps galore. You can fly through so many things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but I know it's very difficult to fly at the Coliseum. I don't think that they're going to get permission to fly over it. Maybe. So you're thinking maybe that was like a 80 mil lens or something. They're just like a it's mile also away. super empty. So no, this I don't is think like, it's an 80 say mil. Anything? Oh, there are no, birds there. I didn't see I, those before. I think it's a uh, I, the lens is a, is a tighter lens. It's probably a thirty five or a fifty on an on an I inspire. Think, I don't think it's even a fifty. Uh, basically, some of the shots are maybe, but there's not a lot going on in these clips. So there's not a lot of I'm action. Not there's not a lot of there's not a lot of subject to really focus on. Yeah. So in in my opinion, yeah. if if you're shooting landscapes here, your composition has to be worth something you have to yeah. find it, and there's a couple of shots in here where the composition is good like great like the like i kind of like this one with the things but like you're like missing half of the, like most of these yeah, shots like you're there. missing half of the subject like the coliseum you can't see most of the coliseum for half mm-hmm. that shot I'll, i think it's i think it's too quick that I think opening that's shot's I mean, probably I the best person, shot i agree yeah i think this person nice. i like the bridge shot with the reflection actually i think the yeah best. that's that's good that one. yeah that's good I think that's the best, but then they just cut straight into it. It's like a group of selects more than a, a reel, I think. Yeah, this is like dailies, um, not a reel. But you know what? Like, I don't know the experience level of this person. Like, this could be like pretty killer stuff for them. Like, they're well, on their way to getting some good yeah, stuff. I mean, and, and let's put it this way: they were they fly worked, here. That's crazy. Yeah, they worked hard enough to get the permission to fly, assuming, and that's that that should be rewarded alone by itself. Yeah, and, oh, and a, lot of these, be... a lot of these types of shots are valuable, you know, in a movie or like as an interstitial clip. You don't really want it to to stick out as much as it just kind of move the story along. And that's what sure. I think these shots are. So they're But nice. I still think they need to I think they need to be a little longer. All right, yeah. cool. Thank you, Winston. I think five cool. seconds is beautiful. Say, John? Yeah, double each of these shots. Like five seconds. Yeah, I'm not worried about the length as much as about like the composition and like motivating like a move, like John, doing you're something. You're never really worried about the length, okay? Hey, there he is. But for real, this looks really good. We just want to see more. Yeah, yeah we want to see more. Yeah. What else? What more else? with more, more both in terms do. of composition a, and yeah, in I think terms a wider of wider lens on, on us would be yeah, better. Yeah, totally. Like nothing you could shoot here would look wrong at this time of day yeah. in this location. It would all look yeah, good. Just widen it up. Or if you're going to use that short lens, pick a subject. Yeah, it looks like great subject. dynamic range, actually, also. Yeah. I, I, I got to assume this is an Inspire, single up Inspire. I think so, too. It's got multiple lenses, so. Does it say? I, the... I, look at, I look at lens flare, honestly, to try to figure out what type of lens, if it's one of those Hasselblad. I like this shot. Lenses. I actually like that shot of the Coliseum there. Yeah. Go back one. That's a great shot. Yeah, go back like 20 seconds. Right there, this one. That one. Yeah, this is good. But then so I basically, kind of ask, so, like, the, it's, so it's like looking at the Coliseum, it's fairly close. The foreground, the light is hitting it. The background is in shadow. And it's moving across it. And you have the background moving one way, the foreground moving the other. Like, that's that's nice. I like that moment. Yeah, that's, it is a great shot. But, yeah, but between but that and the bridge, four other options. that's... I, like I, that. I, like I would have had that. four other options. Like, you see how this light's coming through? Like I would have gone to the other side of the Coliseum and let that just light like, come bam, through bam, the pillars. Bam, 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 bam. You know? yeah, absolutely. It, if there was an opportunity, it's like pretty low in the sky there. And it's know. hard. It's hard to do. I mean, all right, well, it's a movie. Especially. Good work. Next. Yeah. All right, guys. So the next video clip I have kind of ties in. A lot of these I pulled because of location. That was one that just location-wise really pulled for me. The next one is something we'll recognize. Uh, it's a shorter clip, but it's really cool. Okay. The Sunken Queen. Oh, that oh, yeah, boat this is, is capsized. 
capsized cruise ship. This is the one that uh, flipped and they towed That's it pretty in. Pretty cool. It's it's a so, cool location. This location yeah. is where the explosion but, happened in. Oh, uh, in Beirut. Oh, yeah. in Beirut. Oh shit. Damn. Was that ship already sideways uh, flipped no, over? Not. Yes. It's a cool clip. No, it didn't flip over because of the explosion, did it? No, no. I'm not sure. I don't. Are you sure? It looks like it did. That was a uh, big explosion. Yeah, this one. It's really kind of takes your one. breath away to see the the destruction from the explosion uh, and just to fly over top of it. Like, it's yeah, nothing. I really want to see this whole this whole video though because. There's a lot of opportunities. My commentary is basic because I'm not super, uh, I'm not really uh, able to give a good FPV perspective, but I can say it's cool seeing the area. I, as far as the flight path, it's just like oh. kind of basic, but it's super wild to see here's, how bad that explosion here's, was. Here's Wikipedia Orient Queen arrived in Beirut on 27 June 2020 following a 22 day voyage. Uh, from Saudi Arabia on oh 4 August, the vessel was severely damaged by an ammonium nitrate explosion well moored yeah. that's to be anchored at its berth, which is at its dock. The ship was left listing to starboard. Two crew were killed and several people injured. Several other ships were dis- damaged in the same incident. Wow. Okay. That's so crazy, yeah, crazy man. Okay. Nurk to see something like this, like maybe there was more you could have done. Like, it, I definitely like so like if we go back to the very beginning of the clip like once he turns down the ship pause right there so like you can see so the ship is all the way on its starboard side, side. doesn't look like it looks like the port and, side or the port side excuse me and like all of the <laughs> like antennas and arrays that are sticking out the top of it are like bent up against the the birth uh, yeah, the dock. That's cool. Like, why don't we get down underneath those things and fly between them and like and get really up close and personal with the damage, right? We can do, you know, we could do this flight with an Inspire 2 with a much True. better camera than this real studied GoPro, but we can True. take an FPV drone to get down dirty, personal, <laughs> take a moment, make it slow and showcase the destruction and it pull that that story, that moment out. So like, yeah, it, it's a cool clip because of the location, but I want to see yeah. it get down in there. I want, I want to see the destruction and the damage. And I want that story to be told to me of this ship, this, you know, multi-million dollar machine is now just completely, absolutely destroyed. And then boom, pop out of the end of the wreckage and reveal where we are. I don't, I don't even want to know that it's the Ori- Orient queen, until we pop out and we see that scene in Beirut and know, oh my gosh, that's why this, like, yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to be asked the question, like, why is this ship sideways? Like, where are we? And then you pop out of the end of the, de- the guard, the, dis- the destruction and you see, oh, we're in Beirut. Yeah. That's, that's the, the thing explosion. too. Like the that's ship. That's a completely different conversation, right? Yeah. That the perspective is comp- in for this particular scene or this this location you have an opportunity to play with like the upside down world you know because you have this massive building size ship sideways it seems to me like there's an opportunity even to like mount the camera sideways you know like mount a gopro like cock it 90 degrees to the left and and fly cine whoop kind of like through there. I wouldn't even and, thought about that. That's a great idea. You know, and then just like it's 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 uh creating an uncomfortable moment for the viewer when they realize that their reality that you created for them has now just been like completely changed. Has been completely turned. My only question for this is like what kind of access did the guy have? Because if I was flying this and my and obviously the guy's playing it safe, he yeah, he may not have close access to this at all so if he goes down he's not getting it back you yeah. know so that could be a thought in his flying that's um, always the thought flying because, fpv baby yeah. well yeah if, if you're coming from a cinematic perspective and you're not on an fpv drone then you get the way the hell wider mm-hmm. and established but i would almost establish the wreckage first and then find the ship there's a couple different things. I mean, that's interesting. It, it's like, man, first off, I mean, like it obviously tragic. I think this is an amazing 
the location as we've always seen in a lot of these air views videos. I think we're just kind of highlighting crazy location. The, yeah, the power of what we see in the location as like drone operators is that there's always something uniquely different. And um, yeah, I think wonderful. the guy was playing it safe with his flight path. I think that I probably that's the kind of flying that I would have done in a situation like this yeah. because I would be scared to lose it and not be able to get it again. Yeah, right. You know? But the location, like this is something we all saw on the news happen. And now to see it like kind of like up close is kind of crazy. You know, that yeah, I mean, if, to, like, if that's the instant in this video. Sure. I mean, that's that's not a bad shot for the news. I mean, that's a good some that's a di- yeah. easily right. easily to digest that to uh, footage. Miko Kearney for uh, sharing this clip. It's yeah. Awesome. Getting in there. Yeah. Very Sending cool. It. All right. Oh, gosh. Who do we got here? Who's who's doing this? All right, Let's guys. So this Banner is- drones. Okay. So we're in Florida. I know this. I know this. Oh, guy. yeah. Some cool uh, yacht stuff. This is uh, Miami. FPV. Or at least that's where he's from. Bentley. A lot he of real steady action. A lot of just close cruising to Bentleys. We've got a blue Bentley. Have, do, you guys, do you guys want to drive a Bentley? I've never had a desire to drive a Bentley. I would love to Me drive neither. a Bentley. Through the I back haven't. windows. There's a See that the only thing Bentley. that I can think of is how the hell did the dealership allow him to do this? Because they wanted to sell some footy. It yeah. doesn't matter. Like the risk is not worth the reward in nah, this. Instance. They don't. They they pay so much insurance for those cars to just sit there. They don't I care. Think, I think his dad might have a Bentley. That's one way to do it. Um, nah, this this guy this guy gets around. He does like stuff on yachts. He does stuff in cars. We've got Horizon Lock on. I think in real study. Yep. Banner drones comped onto the table back there. Yeah, I saw that. That I didn't care for. Poorly comped. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a problem a little bit with um, the time remapping on uh, something like that. Really? Go ahead. Yeah, I get it. Like you want to move the video along. You want to shorten it up. In this case, the footage was sped up. If you're going to, in my opinion, if you're going to remap something, I like to have a much bigger ramps on either end of the okay. sp- of the speed. You don't want so, it to just like hard speed up, hard slow down. Yeah, I've always gotcha. had an issue with that. I used to do a lot of time remapping in my early days when I was editing a lot of my footage. Yep, and it was and it's a useful tool, right? You want to get from yep. point A to point B uh, faster. So yeah, you can modulate the footage, and um, but it's a matter of if you notice as the viewer. So. So for me, like this is this is pretty great piloting. Like it's it's good good piloting, but what it it's lacking story to me. Like this mm-hmm. is not going to stop me scrolling on Facebook or whatever to look at a Bentley because it you know it's it's cool, but like wh- where's the story? Where's the moment? Like what are we trying to convey here? Other than like this this story is about the drone and the flying ability, yes. not about the Bentley shop that we're in i completely agree with that also in this black bentley can we pause i want to see the interior of this black bentley that we're about Why, to are you trying through. to buy another car dude come on you just <laughs> I, bought a tesla i bought two cars very recently uh pause in here inside here is there a table right there yeah there's a straight up table in the passenger seat there <laughs> like, i can't even see it it's, there's two it's a shit it's like a yeah, tray give, a give tray. me like a give me like a click like <clears throat> Yeah, right there. Look at that. Yeah, it's a tray. <laughs> That's amazing. It's got like a look at an airplane tray in the passenger seat in the back. Oh, I love with, that. With its like twenty inch TV. Oh, well, there's a folding tray here for your meal as well up front on the but back. You know of the what? Front seat. Awesome. It doesn't drive itself. Dude, I cannot it believe they allowed him drive to do it. Itself. That's, that's what I'm saying about it. It was All good day. piloting. I it doesn't do I, anything. I, for I me could do a million that. like I could do a hundred of these videos tomorrow if I wanted to. Probably you, just, you show sleep. them the reel and they're like, Hey, check it out. And they're like, oh, yeah, come fly through our million dollar car. Like, they're okay with it. It's fine. They don't care. To me, what I would have liked to see with this is maybe the process of someone coming, walking into the shop, maybe have them looking at the car, getting excited about it, and then have them at the desk working the deal and then seeing the delivery of it and using the drone to get some cool shots that way. Like, yeah, or like, earlier, or like five or six it. different customers in the process. Like one customer walking in, one customer checking out the thing, one customer sitting at the you know checkout desk, one customer like closing uh, the door or some shit. A like, Bentley. Like, let's in. sew the like, process of getting the Bentley sold because that's what this is about, right? Selling yeah, Bentleys. It's movement. So you're having all this camera movement. I li- I like it. I love camera movement, but you have to film movement with movement, right? Yeah, so. Definitely. 
you you move people around the scene or a car they 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 move really well so like maybe in the beginning there you had a car drive up and you, and that's kind of motivating you as to why you're moving towards the entrance of the dealership yeah. and then you come off the car into the showroom and I'll know. tell you what why is it playing back like I, this it's that's zoom don't worry about that that's our high tech yeah. uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's i i wonder i bet works. you i bet you banner drones had like two batteries he only had time for that that was all they gave him they gave him like 500 bucks and said here just get a shot <clears throat> and sure. that's a hell of a deal i'd take that if I were right him. so i i don't want to judge him too harshly but i still want to see it so let's step it up another level next yeah. video all right, baby. We have high <laughs> expectations here. And in we fact, do. we're getting pickier on the Good Flight Podcast. I love it. <laughs> the, the number of times You're people have wrote in and be like, yo, but I, I, got a, I got a message today from the Joshua Bardwell podcast from the uh, uh, from Ewalt FPV for like one of the reels that we talk trash on. And he's like, by the way, that shot wasn't illegal. We had the permits. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Well, fine. Is that guy in California? Uh, I think he's Vancouver. So West Coast, oh. but I think he's in Canada. Anyway. Oh, this oh I've seen this. This, this one is so sick. good. Hell yeah. Now we're talking. Okay. Baby. okay, okay. Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? All right, guys. Ron Hunchers. Hunchers. Look at this guy's profile pic. He Ot- looks like Ot- stunned. Ron Hunchers with uh, Octodsnetrom FPV. Uh, oh, yeah. my gosh. I've so. watched John try and replicate that shot many times to no <laughs> avail. It's true, but the difference about this, I've seen this video before. It's amazing. The antenna itself is special because it's st- it's really at the top. So we're, what we're looking at here for our listeners is a uh, a European antenna. It's oh. a European podcast, and it's a uh, it's a uh, red and white. <gasps> Did he go backwards ho- down that hollow uh, hollow interior? And we have some incredible dive shots on the inside of the antenna. So like the hollow part of it. And then we have it on the outside. But look at that shape right there. We see the wide. It gets fatter towards the... It's got a fat bottom, right? Fat booty. Fat bottom girls. That makes it easier to dive because um, you can give yourself... Stakes get lower. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but he got within a foot of one of the lights there. He was inches. Inches, son. Yeah. Nonetheless, this is incredible piloting, incredible skills. This video is sick. I mean, it's Russia, so he probably doesn't have to have permission. Just an AK. Yeah, whatever. And an yeah, Adidas, an AK and an Adidas tracksuit. I like that sideways dive thing. Is cool through the. Yeah, sun. I've never seen that. I like, Backlight. I like that. Yeah, it's it's pretty tricked out. I like the backwards falling backwards down it. That's pretty sick. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. think it's actually falling backwards? Or you think it's reversed it? You can't fly that up with an FPV drone. You just put a camera. Oh, Maybe it was a I think he's going. I think he's going backwards down it. Genu- genuinely, that's amazing. Cool. But, no, no critiques. Good color. Good mood, good yeah, action. That's super cool. Send it. Like, where was? How did he get out of this? He just pumps out. Bam. Yeah, you just find that gap and hit it. You can't do that with your Inspire. <laughs> uh, not not in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> Although I've flown inside of a uh, windmill before. Are windmills that sketchy. big? Oh yeah. Huh. Well, yes and no. I mean, they're big, but they're not. They're like seven feet across inside. Getting smaller towards the top. A lot of stories James has. He's flying inside a lot of different things. Don't discredit the Inspire, Nurk. Okay, it's an incredible tool. Um, you know what? Keep discrediting the Inspire. I don't care. You know what? I, it's it's for I me. An Alta Eight inside of Coit Tower in San Francisco. Nice. That was crazy. I flew an M six hundred inside the Guggenheim Museum, dude. Did you hit the painting or? Yes. I th- flew a squirt into neil degrasse tyson <laughs> that's not a it's not an exaggeration cool i don't want this show to nope. be about competitive but james and i are so freaking competitive i know <laughs> nurk is right up there with that competitive nature J- nurk i wish you were out there in chicago one time we were out for six hours playing fokker okay oh, that's Jesus. uh frisbee soccer okay? okay that sounds awesome you're out there Oh, it was awesome. I don't know the rules. Setzer, uh, the one that invented it, I think. Right, John? Yeah, Setzer. Yep. My buddy, Matt yep. Setzer. Shout out to him. Anyway, just taught me the hammerhead that night. I was just crushing. There you go. Me, me, you, and uh, what do we call him these days? Alex Haas. Haas. Yeah. Alex Haas. You know, the best at everything, that guy. Nonetheless, I think one of the best things that 
I guess uh, this podcast goes to show is there are some incredible journeys that you can get along the way as a professional drone operator. <clears throat> yes. If you're on the fence and if you're listening to this and these stories don't motivate you to get involved and maybe to invest a little bit of your own money or your mom's money into buying a drone, do it because it's incredible. And yeah, that's uh, true. the time off is just as good as the time on. In fact, the time on is the best, which is, which is really nice. You get the most fun you have is when you're getting paid to work. But uh, the time traveling in between is also a lot of fun, too. Yes. And the people you meet are friends forever. Even though James and I are across the country, we still talk all the time. Yeah, that's just, uh, you know, what happens when you hang around like-minded people with uh, similar interests. Really yeah, good I've, friends. I've literally yeah. never stopped talking to James from the moment I met him. There you go. It's, true. <laughs> it's not a lie. But yeah, if you're, if you're not flying drones yet, get out there. Start flying drones if you're interested. And don't be afraid to put them in weird situations, okay? Get the uh, Best Buy Care Safely. Or DJI Refresh or whatever. Because in the first drone I ever bought, I was afraid to fly at first. And the guy that hired me to do a job said, if you're afraid to fly it, why are you here? And the next day, that drone got stolen out of my car. So I might as well have crashed it right then and there. And I, I said, never again. I'm never going to like hold back. And I'm just going to like make it the best that I can for each shot. And that's worked well for me so far. You know, I've gotten to do some pretty cool stuff. I haven't lost too many drones in the process. So, well, James Sykes, uh, we want to give this opportunity for you to plug the projects you've got going on. Please uh, tell us what's your social, what's your, uh, what projects you got going on. This is your time. I'm the man of like 14 different Instagrams. I always constantly change them. Right now, That's I'm true. kind of really focused on photography, actually. Mm, okay. Uh, started a uh, website for car photography, instillvisuals.com. That's instillvisuals.com. Uh, Link in description. <laughs> Instillvisuals. Instill is one word, but you know, either way. And then no project. Project uh, Don't Get COVID Again is going on right now. And uh, there's, you know, work had come back kind of frequently in the last month or two, uh, which I've been very grateful for because before that it was pretty silent and, uh, you know, keep the bills paid. That's the, that's the journey right now. And there's a couple of cool jobs popping up, uh, here and there. And just in the time that I have off, I'm just focusing on the crafts and trying to hone my skills a little bit more so that when I get to use them, uh, I'm ready. So Instagram, uh, you can put perhaps underscore james that's my personal instagram nice okay. there you he's go. got some great stories on there and instills video uh instills visuals by the <laughs> way some really really sick uh automotive photography like top-notch dime pieces on there i the, all of his photos look wet for some reason i keep saying that it's just soaked even it's though because the car you is, are wet yeah i mean Looking maybe <laughs> james if you have an awesome car and you're in the uh, la area let me know and we'll there we go set up a shoot Hell yeah. There you go. Flexing. Well, James, I haven't uh, known you very long, but I would love to get a couple beers with you to shoot with you sometime. I'm, I'm very impressed. Oh, very yeah. excited to, to have, have gotten to talk to you. Um, thanks John for introducing us and yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to what James had to say. There was so much that I had to say <laughs> so much that you still Probably. want to talk about. Talk I think you're the Probably. only drone pilot that I've I known could. to have shot himself whilst flying a drone. And falling asleep. falling asleep. Yeah. He yeah, takes, one of those he takes pride exciting. in one. He <laughs> takes pride in one of those too. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Both of them. You know what? Hey, I was mid shot, shit my pants, still got it done. You know what I mean? What does that say? <laughs> true, true That's professional. Commitment. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much for listening. Check out that Instagram <laughs> and keep flying the good flight.